Welcome back to World of the News. This week, I'm sure you're going to want to hit the hell out of that subscribe button because I'm pretty damn sure that we're going to start getting dev blogs for 1.103 very soon. In fact, possibly by the time that you watch this video because these videos take forever to make. But along with dev blogs, there are some rumors that I'd like to cover, things that people are suspecting could come. We'll go and talk about this, see if it's really going to happen. First, let's talk about these dev blogs. Now, why I'm saying that there's going to be dev blogs most likely this coming Monday is because the Ka 50 dev vlog last year came out on October 11th. Now, this year, October 11th, was a Sunday. However, today, October 12th, is a Monday, which is a day in which Gaijin does do some work sometimes. Now, it's possible they might wait till Tuesday or even Friday if they really want to push it, but it's likely that we're going to give dev vlog probably while this video is still in production because I'm actually playing naval and during confrontation and not actually working on the video. I know, I'm being lazy, but come on. It's going to only be up for a little while. Let me have a break. In a realistic sense, we could probably assume a few things that the dev blog is going to be about. In fact, you may already know, but let's just go over what we could expect to be the main focal point of the patch. And then we're going to go further into some more silly ideas. So the most realistic idea is that they're going to introduce another nation's helicopter tree. Probably Italy, maybe China. Reason is also a bit of a possibility, but I have a feeling that it's probably going to be Italy. Why? Because Italy not only has a wide variety of helicopters, more of a single helicopter had a wide variety of variants, which would make researching much easier. And people have made extensive suggestions on the farms that very detailed about various Italian helicopters well I haven't seen as much for Swedish or Chinese ones but really you could make the entire Italian heli tree out of a 129 mangustas if you felt like it because it has so many variants and mangustas aren't the only helicopters that the Italian had they had plenty of other ones that would be viable and not viable I'm hoping they have a really cool starter heli of course if they're coming now the other possibility of things you could see not necessarily a new naval tree I guess you could piece together copy paste one for China. They did have a good number of naval vessels and so far wouldn't be too outmatched by what we already have in game. Though I don't think they have any heavy cruisers. Sweden too would actually be a bit better fit for our naval force. More of their own unique designs not ones built by Japan, Project 7 U's and Fletcher's. Another likely possibility for a naval tree would be France. They had quite a extensive navy. Unfortunately a navy can't defend you from a land invasion but before they were invaded by Germany they had everything up to battle ships and even the aircraft carriers so they would be prime opportunity for a fantastic naval tree no matter where Gaijin decides to go with naval forces. Speaking of which it's a high possibility that they might be going with battle cruisers. Nice big new ship to prance around could get a lot of people's eye and in December of last year they did say in an interview on a website MMORPG.com that they would be adding battle cruisers in 2020 as well as an Italian heli tree. We haven't seen those yet so we are anticipating them however However, it's not out of the question for Gaijin to not fulfill a promise, as they've done that in the past. In fact, Enlisted was supposed to be out already, I'm pretty sure, but they had extended that. So don't get your hopes up for battle cruisers. but hey, maybe maybe we will get them. I kind of hope we do, because it'd be cool. Though, Naval kind of needs some balancing, maybe before we add a new type of ship. Another strong possibility of things that we could see is a T-90. Now, I don't think I have the clip anymore, but I'm pretty sure they had said in a live stream, one of the developers stated that they would add the T90 after they get all the T72s out of the way. A uh, lot of our players asked asked us about about T90. Yeah. Uh, where, when it will be in our game? Or, or, which is which is by the way an yeah. upgrade to T72. It's basically a T72. Yeah, but we version. we cannot uh, add uh, T, T90 mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and not to add uh, T72. No, naturally, yeah, yeah. and. In this page, we add T72 B. So, guys, that's a hint, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> And with the T-72 B-3, there's not many more T-72s to add now, is there? I guess there's more specific variants that you could talk about, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're just going to move on to T-90. It might not be better than the T-72 B-3, but it might. There's a possibility maybe when they add the T-90, they'll also add active protection systems. And starting with the one on the T-90, the Stora 1, which apparently isn't actually that great. That's why I'm thinking that it would be a good one to start with. They could test the waters to see how 
how much it changes the game balance. Does it make the tank overpowered or does it not do anything at all? And how does the community react to it? If it's a negative response, perhaps this will be the only active protection system in game. But it's a positive one, then they can move on to more effective systems for other nations. Besides that, there are some vehicles that we can anticipate coming based on more down-to-earth reasons. For example, there was the leak of the image of the PTZ-98 that I made a video on a little bit ago. There was also another vehicle found in the files, which was a Type 74F. As it currently stands with the Type 74, it seems they had rolled just about all the variants into one. And the variants themselves didn't have a whole lot of difference. But adding this one, it's possible they could reduce the quality of the existing one, perhaps remove the top tier shell, maybe reduce the battle rating as well, and give this one the top tier shell. Or they could have B2 of the same tank, allowing people to have another vehicle in their lineup. Regardless, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen with it. Maybe it's just going to sit the files forever like some other vehicles we have in there. Along with those, there was another vehicle found in the files, this time a much more odd one, a Matilda Hedgehog, which is going to get more strange the more I read about it. It's a Matilda, the tank we have in game, the slow British one with the 40, you know it, you've probably run into it in low tier battles. And on the back it has hedgehogs, or an anti-submarine mortar, which fires 65 pound bombs, essentially, a good amount of distance, and these bombs have about 14 kilograms of TNT. In comparison, an RP3 has about 7 kilograms of explosive. Now my theory here is that it's not actually going to be for the patch. I think this is going to be an event vehicle for the upcoming anniversary of War Thunder that happens, I think, early December. But the festival stuff starts at the end of October. Another vehicle that people thought might be coming, it seemed pretty likely as there was bits of it found in data mines, was the Vegan, the Swedish jet. However, that seemed to be turned down by Sim 1080p quite soon after. So let's get into the more bizarre ideas of things that could possibly be coming. Starting off, an individual who was testing out the B-17BS had discovered if you turn the sound effects up all the way while sitting in the harbor that the test flight takes place in, you can start to hear some strange sounds. People are thinking possibly these are intended for submarines and the fact that you're floating on the water, you can hear them for some reason. They might just be generic harbor sounds, which might be a bit more realistic. I'm not anticipating submarines, but submarines could be something to anticipate. Submarines were a big part of the war. A lot of people also have been asking for them and every nation had submarines. In a gameplay wise and in a real world wise, the submarine is really just a torpedo boat that can submerge, having similar firepower and when they're underwater, they typically are extremely extremely slow. There's already depth charges and mines in the game, so we do have defenses against them. Two issues I could see. Some make the argument that submarines would essentially just be helicopters of naval battles sitting and waiting to kill things. And while that could be an argument not to add in the game, it wouldn't be an argument for Gaijin because they did add helicopters, which ruined top tier. The other one is that it could be really boring because I gotta tell you, they go really slow underwater. If you were to submerge and prepare for a ship to come by, you could be waiting for quite some time doing nothing but waiting for a ship ship to come by to hopefully launch torpedoes at them and kill them, it's entirely possible your torpedoes will miss. Now the reason why I don't think they're coming is because Gaijin has denied them several times and they haven't really been moving so large for major game changes, especially in naval. They've just been adding more stuff this year. I think the lockdowns things has unfortunately hindered development of the game. Now I got another conspiracy theory for you. This one I've been pushing a lot more all this year. Probably not going to come true, but you never know. Somebody had spotted on a recent War Thunder YouTube video by Gaijin called the ME262 Family, in which one of the 262s flying around was of a Czechoslovakian camo. Now, of course, probably just a user skin. Why would it not be? In fact, it literally is just a user skin, but I still want to go on about my dumb conspiracy. See, this had gotten someone's gears turning on the forums, thinking, what if they're hinting towards a another tech tree, possibly Czechoslovakian? But I got my gears turning even more. You see, it says on the fuselage PL01. What is the PL-01? Well, it happens to be that bizarre Polish stealth tank that is quite iconic. So maybe they are flexing once again their secret plan to implement a Polish tech tree. Or maybe they're showing with this that they're going to have a Czech, Polish, and maybe even Hungarian tech tree. Now, unfortunately, the reality of the situation is not nearly as fun as I'm making it out to be. The skin itself is indeed just a Giza skin, and it's based off a historical Czechoslovakian 
262 that had the PLO-1 on the fuselage. And in the video, they were talking about how Czechoslovakia was still using these after the war till the 50s. So they're not implying anything. None of the images mean anything. It's just is exactly what it looks like on the surface. And that's all I got for you this time around. I gotta wonder though, do you have any weird interesting ideas on what we could see in the coming patches? Either the next coming one, 1.1013, or perhaps maybe the end of the year patch, 1.105. When can we just get a 2.0 patch? Like, come on, I'm tired with all these ones. I'm gonna have to deal with this forever. But anyways, you can contact me with that information either in the comments or down below. Before I end this video, I'd first like to thank some pretty damn awesome people. Those intelligent members of society happen to be my YouTube members and Patreons, starting with the Patrons. We have Sukoshi Tiger, Sovia Aqua, CMDR Edward, and Sukabli Irinahue. As well as a special thank you to Devis and Tex for their $10 a month donation. Thank you very much, guys. As for YouTube members, the $1 tier is Mako, Cupcake Jesus, Tiver Tom, Luce, and Raymond the Saints. Thank you very much. For the $5 level, there is Grimace, the Royal Rat, Laizu Sufudai, GG Ultra Blue, Matthew Cameron, Lars Henrik, Peter Klavinsky, Nico Korkamaki, Mehmet Hazarchi, Roger Rammer, Mighty Peppers, Pointless Gun Sinks, and Waffly Joker 6. A very large thank you to all of you, and a final large thank you to Dweep Lowski for being a $10 level donator. Thank you very much to all of you, go. YouTube members precisely get to use emojis on comments on this channel, while all patrons and YouTube members have access to a special patron and YouTube member Discord channel. It should be automatic to get the role for patrons, however, I need to do it manually for YouTube members, so if you do not have it and wish to have it, make a comment in one of the community posts that I put out of what your Discord name is, while those who give 5 or more dollars a month get videos a bit early. And I don't really know what to give to the $10 donators, I can't think of anything interesting Interesting. Besides, I don't know, pictures of my cats eating cat food? If you've got any good ideas, I'd be glad to hear them. But anyways, I hope you very much enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I make more Thunder Weekly News videos every Friday. Make random views throughout the week, and I like to stream on Saturdays. So be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified anytime I upload a thing at all. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. In the terms of bonus news, 